the money and stuff mm. like how much like an estimate like uh, actuaries make yeah so you're doing stats right yes yeah so how did you manage it hello hello guys uh, welcome back to gift varsity tv uh, this is your host gift Bozekana. as you know that in this channel uh, we we make sure that we bring the best you know and it's very important that you subscribe you know everywhere you are in south africa even out of south africa i see that there are also students who are watching this channel outside uh, south africa and that's great indeed uh hello hi uh, how are you i'm okay Kefuna. i'm great uh can you introduce yourself i am tando noganda and i am an actual professional yeah. oh actual professional oh wow so tell us about your, your, your background okay so background wise i am from the eastern cape I grew up in Tanzania, outside of East London. I went to school in Port Elizabeth, which is now Kabecha. I went to Westring High. And after that, I went to Cape Town, the University of Cape Town. That's where I studied actuarial science. And now I am here working in the city of gold. Okay, okay, okay. That's great. So you went to Cape. Okay, now, so, like, tell us about your, where, where you studied high school and which uh, subject did you take yeah, in your high school? Okay. and what what kind of uh, student were you are because yeah, for real uh, if you are an actual uh, uh, actual science student you have to be hey i don't know <laughs> how here from yeah okay so i went to westring high which is in westring in port elizabeth and my school was nice in the sense that being a course dream so you could sort of pick your subjects and match them as long as the timetable allowed so i took information technology we did turbo delphi and I took physical sciences and I took accounting and obviously pure maths and that was my subject stream. I was also a bit of a hockey player but I wasn't really that great and I played chess that I was actually quite good at. I used to play like board one or board two so I'm quite yeah I'm still I'm still you know happy about that and then that was my high school. I was I was a prefect so I was the typical you know nerd um, not to say that that's what gets you into XI, obviously, but I, I, I was dedicated to my school books. I don't know. I think school just came easy to me. So it's something that I enjoyed because obviously you enjoy things that you're good at and you're good at things that you enjoy. So it works in both in both cases. And then Cape Town. What do you want to know? We oh. don't study at the beach. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, now, okay, you... you in grade 11 okay is actual science something that you've always wanted to start or is there other uh, career fields that you wanted to pursue okay so it's funny because in my head in grade 11 all i had was um civil engineering that's because oricon came to my school my presenter and so oricon has south african offices and they also have dubai offices so obviously as a 17 year old you're planning i'm going to do four years of civil engineering and then four years of work back and then i'm going to go to the dubai offices like i had a 10 year plan and then i think towards the end of grade 11 or beginning of matric sad p came to a nearby school so that's the south african actuaries development program they were presenting at Linkside High and I just wanted to go to Linkside to go see like what's it like inside. But also the thing that, you know, attracted me to that presentation was they wanted to only chat to the top two matriculants and the top two grade 11s. And I was obviously in the top two. And, you know, in high school, you just want to meet other people who've got like all the badges and all the, you know, their blazers. So for me, that's what I was interested in. And I didn't even know it was networking back then. I just wanted to see other high achievers. And I wanted to see, you know, Linkside. I'd never heard of actuarial science before that. So we get to the presentation and Umamun Kize, I think, no, no, I forget her name. No Zipe, no Zipe or someone. But Umamun Kize, she was in charge of Sad P at the time. So she was presenting and she spoke about, you know, how few black actual professionals there are in South Africa at the time also the case like right now and she was also talking about like it's a high paying profession and there's a lot of prestige in it and like I went there because I wanted to see other people's badges and blazers so prestige was obviously something that I cared about a lot at 17 
and obviously money like i've always been interested in you know uplifting the my living standards just bettering myself um so i think that's how i got into actual science let me tell you when i started applying for varsities i applied for maths and stats because i knew that gets you into actual science and actual science like civil engineering went out of my head after that presentation oh no you're like okay there's money you want to <laughs> okay so now you're like you decided that now you want to uh, do actual science after that presentation okay so which universities universities did you apply to okay so my school library only had the prospectus for eup right yeah. but everything was in afrikaans and i was just like i know afrikaans because i studied it as a first additional language but i was like but then when i researched uh, actual science at the time it was available at up at wits at stellenbosch and then at uct um <sighs> So back then you had to pay for you know applications and vets the application fee was 300 UCT was 100 and Stellenbosch was 100 and I was like no to you people because of Afrikaans thing so Stellenbosch was also Afrikaans right in 2013 when I applied and the actual classes were only in Afrikaans you could write your test in English but the, because it's such a small class right so for other faculties they had English and Afrikaans classes but traditionally XI is small I was like I was willing to do that because my physics teacher went to Stellenbosch and I really liked her. So it made sense at 17. Like when I look back at it I'm like that's a really dumb reason to want to apply to varsity. So anyways, I didn't have enough money for all of them. So I applied for UCT, I applied for Stellenbosch, and then I applied for Wits, but I didn't, you know, I didn't pay the money and you had to like I'm revealing my age now, but like you had to actually post the proof of deposit like after you've paid the application fee you have to put that in with like your grade 11 report and your june report and send it to the varsity so i never did that so i only applied for the two and i ended up at uct oh wow so now you are admitted uh, accepted uh, in uct uh, for for actual science okay Now you are a student at UCT. Tell us now, like uh, the challenges you came across. F the first day you become a student at UCT, yeah. Okay, so actually, I didn't get accepted for actual science. I got accepted for maths and stats. So I did very well in grade eleven. I did very well in my trials, and I got a conditional offer, as you know. And the condition was eighty percent for maths. I didn't get the eighty. I got seventy eight. I remarked. I got seventy nine. I was so I mad. I didn't want to like talk to anyone. I didn't want to eat. I, I just I wasn't doing well. Um, that that that. you know January so what actually happened is i obviously got in touch and i knew that uct i could transfer after a year and then stellenbosch said okay here, yes for maths and stats and then you could transfer in june um so i chose uct and i started your maths and stats and i worked hard because two things i didn't get a bursary right i was on ns fast but I was sort of the missing middle so I didn't qualify for 100% of NASFAS but I also didn't qualify for you know UCT funding so what UCT does which I'm so grateful for is they have a scholarship fund for people in the missing middle so it's like if your parents earn too much to get NASFAS but they don't earn enough to actually cover your fees so I was part of that missing middle so now the pressure is they don't pay 100% they pay a certain portion So like my mom had to pay a portion of it and obviously I've got this pressure on me I didn't get into the program I want and my mom has to pay and I know she possibly won't have the money next year it worked very hard and I managed to get into the program the following year so the requirements were 70% for maths 70% for statistics 60% for ecos 60% for accounting I got those and then I got a bursary and yeah in second year I this is the first course I'm doing straight actuarial science so it's called intro so intro to actu actuarial science and then I'm doing your stats 2 now and and all of those and I think the challenge there was just balancing and obviously my bursary had requirements so I was sponsored by a, a bursary called Vodacom and they were administered by career wise and i think the challenge there was just meeting the requirements again which 
also stand for XI to get to, you know, third year. You have to get like 60% in, 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 in your subjects. So I had to, you know, stay with that. And but like, how do I say? I was very happy because I'd ticked off most of the problems that I'd faced in first year, which were the fa funding as well as getting into the program that I wanted. I was fin finally this, you know, prestigious actual science student. Because I think in first year, even in subsequent years, the three questions that you get on campus, what's your name, where you're from, and what are you studying? And when people say actuarial science, everyone's like, oh, and like, I loved that. Do you understand what I mean? Um, I, I don't know. I think it just brushed my ego. So finally, I'd gotten that and I didn't have to worry about like my mother paying for my fees and stuff like that anymore. And I'd settled in Cape Town. Um, I had a single room. I was accepted into res. I'd made friendships. I'd made connections in lectures, which are very important because we learn differently and other people are good like at other things and you're good at something else. So it's very nice to like work together. So peer to peer learning, I thought like I, I found it very important, which is something that I didn't do in high school, which is something I figured out in varsity and yeah. Okay. Oh, now I'll be like, oh, he's doing actual science. It's like, hey, yeah. I'm big. <laughs> All right. So now, uh, like, how did you make sure that you you, you retain your pazari, you get good marks as an actual science student? Because like in the majority of the actual science students, they are suffering at university. Like, how did you make sure that you get these great marks? Okay, so I was lucky because in first year and second year, I was in a girls' res, and I was like, I had so much support. We had mentorship programs. We had tutors within the res and you just spoke out which is very hard at the beginning because you're coming from high school and you're a really good student and you are used to people coming to you for help and now you have to go to others for help so after i got over that hurdle and i was like look this is bigger than me i need to take on the degree at the end of the day once i started speaking to my peers and then to senior students i actually found out about things like the math hot seat the stats hot seat extra tutorials that i could attend and i think that really helped me so just speaking out so that you could know maybe the resources that you're not aware of and then just generally like working in groups like i know for accounting i had a friend who is actually on his way to be a casa now if he hasn't qualified so he was doing accounting so accounting is his major and i only needed to get 60 percent in accounting so obviously he would work harder in that and working together helped because he would be more up to date with that than i would be right same thing with your maths majors so i was doing second year mathematics and i was working with people who were specializing in mathematics so they had to do third year mathematics so they would work harder in that and all i needed was a 50 percent so once you make those friendships you can leverage off of each other like i'm not saying like you become a mosquito now do you understand what i mean like do your part play your part work together with that person but like make those friendships so that they're beneficial to you in the end um, so once I learned how to do that, learning how to speak out, finding out the resources that were actually at my disposal, that I was paying for, by the way, in that 100000 per year, um, once I found those out and I made use of them, I knew that I wasn't alone, I wasn't fighting this fight alone. You understand what I mean? Because at the end of the day, your degree doesn't say Tando no Kanda, helped by, you understand what I mean? It just says Tando no Kanda. So if you're helped by other people and it helps you get over the line quicker, why not m make use of that? Yeah so, oh yeah, so working with friends, uh, asking for help, you know, yeah, reaching out, it's, it's very important if you are, uh, okay. Yeah, so tell us now about your student life, more of it, like, did you grow to groove, Nya, now, <laughs> and stuff? <laughs> okay, so that's actually funny. I stopped drinking in varsity. So I started in matric, which isn't a great time to start, um, but... Um, when I got to varsity, I realized that it wasn't actually for me. So in first year, a lot of people do things because that's how you make friends. So Kutwa Masambe say Long Street and now you're there putting money together for the cab. And But then I realized that I didn't like it. I didn't like the taste. I didn't like the vibe. Like I'm I'm a very, like I'm an extrovert in the Ateta, but I'm also very, I like my space. I like comfort. I like safety. So I stopped drinking once I'd gotten my friends. And it was a matter of saying, guys, invite me when you go out for ice cream. Don't invite me when you go too long. And they respected that, do you understand? Because we had already been friends. And our friendship wasn't solely based on going out. 
um once i did that that's something i've kept even today like but like i've been working now for five years and when i look at tops and check a slicker i'm like i'm glad that's not a habit that stuck because i genuinely couldn't afford it um so that's it but i used to go out like with my friends to things like ice cream um that staying in your room thing doesn't always work because you might be staying in your room but you're not studying so what's the point so once you learn that as well that becomes very important it's like when are you most productive so i'm most productive in the morning so luckily i had a lot of morning lectures and i had some evening lectures but i also knew like if i don't get up and i work in the morning then it's ko for my day so once you navigate that space where you have some self-knowledge on when are you most productive you're not going to be that person that's going to go to the library even though you know you're sleepy because you know that you're wasting your time so once i figured out my best you know down times i'll go out for ice cream um i had some family in cape town so i'll go out to visit them what else did i enjoy i played chess in res and yeah okay all right uh i i see that you you were disciplined yeah it's very, and it's indeed it's true that you can be in your own space and it's like i don't like going out but you are procrastinating in your room you are not studying so it does happen things like that so now a graduation day came now hey how oh, yes <laughs> so i actually started working in 2018 jan yeah. and it degree being a uct was holding me back with one stats course so i started working i went to an interview and they asked me can you be on campus and can you you know be working at the same time i said i've never said yes faster than that right um so i said yes that's how i got my first graduate program which made gra uh, graduation that much more sweeter because i graduated in april of 2019 uh, so it's the December cohort and they hosted in April. I flew my mom and my aunt and my dad to Cape Town. It was the first time that my mom and my aunt were flying and they were excited. They flew from uh, East London Airport, which is a posy, like it's this small. They flew to Cape Town International and it's massive. So I was really excited about that and I bought a bed especially for them because then Nala could trust and I just I'm a very minimalistic person and I don't like spending my money. So I bought a bed because I knew they were coming um, and all of those things. I hosted them in Cape Town. I took them out. They don't like sushi. So it, it like graduation was important to me because my family was there to celebrate with me and I've always been fortunate in that the go to like hopper suitcase from cape town to east london i didn't get that pressure of when are you finishing when are you finishing um so it made that day that much sweeter because i knew it was people who were wanting to ask but held themselves back and now finally the day was here okay. now all right indeed that's great i'm like oh see i see a fly and i'm flying <laughs> Okay, so you, you said that you started working before you graduate, even. All right, all right. So now, um, tell us more. Like, uh, what is actual science all about? You know, maybe students are listening to us. Maybe a grade twelve learner is listening. Like what is what does science. it take to become an actual science? Uh, an actual. Let me put it like that. Okay, so actual science is the study of risk. So risk is everywhere, right? So risk is in financial services risk is in pick and pay has risk so the fact that pick and pay experiences people stealing from the shelves that's a risk that they have to price in so every year they have to check okay how much are we going to lose because people steal how much are we going to lose because of spillage like when the packers are packing things on the shelves and things fall and break so you mitigate that risk by taking out insurance so you as a person you'll take out insurance on your car you'll take out insurance on your house sort of oh, and I, I like to joke should i die what's going to happen you know to my house what's going to happen to my car so risk is everywhere in every sector um i just happen to work in financial services but that's essentially what an actual science uh, um degree gets you to a risk profession where you actually manage calculate and mitigate risk for you know organizations so all right all right yes all about risk and uh, so like what does it take for me like to call myself as an actual what right. what are the 
scanners. Okay, so from Varsity, you can do an actual science degree or you can do a maths and stats degree, right? After that, you write ASA board exams, right? Which are internationally recognized exams, right? And over there, there are 15 of them. But you can get exempted whilst you are in, in, in varsity. So in varsity, the pass mark is 50%, right? But for certain exemptions, if you get 60, then when you leave varsity, it becomes 15 minus those ones that you are exempted from. Do you understand what I mean? So after those 15 exams, there are different levels. So after the first eight, you can get the TASA, which are the technical actuary, right? That means you've passed the technical part of, of, of you know, your actual training. And then there's AMASA, which is you're an associate now of the, of the faculty of actuaries. And then there's FASA, which is, you know, the ultimate goal for everyone. Um, so there are levels to it, but it's essentially those board exams. So you can you know, tick off some whilst you're in varsity and you don't have to necessarily have the actual science degree. I know if, like a few of my friends switch to things like Ecos and Stats, Ecos and Finance. You can register with ASA after those degrees as long as you've done, I think, two years of pure maths and two years of statistics. You understand? So you can do your pure maths and stats and then still become an actual profession as long as you write those board exams after, you know, graduating. Oh, wow. Uh, let's hope you had guys who are doing maths and stats here. You know, I know stats is killing you guys. You know, <laughs> so you're doing stats, right? Yes. Yeah. So how did you manage it? So stats was quite challenging because it's sort of an applied maths. It's easier than pure maths because it's you. You can see what you're doing, right? They're asking you what's the probability that Tando is going to do this and this and this. You understand what I mean? Um, so it's a bit easier than you know just show, which is all the maths question you know asks you. Um, but I did it by practicing i think stats that's the only thing that gets you through it's not about memorizing it's not yes you must understand the principle but understanding the principle and answering an exam are two different things because the level goes up you know how i'm sure you know like in high school there are different levels in a question paper so if it's out of 10 there's five marks that everyone can sort of get it's basically what the teacher taught and then there's three marks that are like okay if you really want to do well and then there'll be like the two marks which are for the really good you know students the top performers right so stats is a bit like that do you understand what i mean um and to get just that 50 percent it's just understanding the concept but to get above all of that you have to like practice 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 okay that's great so initially you uh, you said that you heard more about the money and stuff like how much like an estimate like uh, actuaries make yeah like an estimation not like a real amount like <laughs> <laughs> you know how much how can you afford life look i i think i do very well for myself i i have a car i have a house um i'm comfortable right and so are my many you know colleagues and stuff and people in the general profession but i can tell you the graduate salary so when i started that was 2018 so you can just inflation inflation to what you would have today if you were to start so when i started my salary was 280 right so i was netting about 20k and i just had a matric certificate right um and that is because it is it is one of those careers where there are very few people who qualify to actually put forward their cv and say i have this degree so it's a supply and demand kind of situation so it's very lucrative i think when i got that when i got my offer right for 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 that graduate position i i went back to like 17 year old me and i was like yeah yeah you know what i mean so it is it is well paying i'm not even going to to lie to you it is well paying and it's internationally recognized so there are a so lot of opportunities <laughs> I'm not an actual. I'm not an actuary. I'm still an actual student. Yeah. I'm guys. I can't. Come on. Um, but like I said, I do very well for myself. Um, I was going to say I have a black card, but everyone has a black card these days. But I think I do well for myself. Um, you can afford the kind of life that I think seventeen-year-old you dreamt of having. Okay, I see that she she doesn't want to disclose. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, guys, they say you can afford if it's something that you really, really want. Okay, uh, that's an interesting story indeed uh, about your journey, and you're still in the journey of becoming an actual. Okay, now you are what? 
I'm still just like, trying to know that. Okay, like you're an actual analyst. Yeah. I'm a quantitative analyst, but yes, I work in insurance. It's it's one and the same things, right? So you can be an actual site, actual analyst. You can be a quantitative analyst. You can also be a data scientist. It just depends who you're talking to. Okay. So, what is the last words like an advice that you can provide to every student watching us currently, even the actual science students? What can you say to them? Okay, so I don't think varsity is about being smart. I think smartness gets you in, but being able to sit down and study and persevere is what gets you out with what you wanted when you went in. Because I know a lot of girls who went in and they were smarter than me way smarter than me i'm talking about like i got 10 distinctions vibes they went in and they changed their course some left the university simply because they couldn't manage everything and they couldn't balance everything because varsity is a lot about balance right because you're experiencing a lot of things all at once suddenly you live on your own suddenly you've got a bit of pocket money suddenly you've got friends that share the same interests as you so balancing that and you know having to go to your room and do what needs to be done are things that a lot of people struggled with so i've always been very disciplined and i was just lucky that i was able to pick up habits that helped me you know get across the line so i think that's that's quite important and just knowing yourself like i was like i was you know talking to earlier it doesn't matter if you're in the library from you know 8 a.m when it opens until 10 p.m when it closes if you know that you're not you're having an off day rather go out do your laundry clean your room cook your meals and do things that need to be done but you say you don't have time to do and then come back when you feel like actually working um so i think yeah i think that's what i can say uh thank you so much uh and uh, okay no can't. <laughs> okay thank you thank you so much uh, uh, with this motivational story uh, you provided us let's hope we guys uh, those who want to become actuaries you, you at least you have something to your mind uh, you so much uh, all the best with your career uh, Jane and career field until you become an actuary then yeah you're still writing your board exam I'm still writing, oh, I'm still writing. Okay, okay thank you so much guys don't forget to subscribe like share and comment down below if you really enjoyed this uh, video please make sure that you like like right now because when you like this video it has a chance of being viewed by many people uh, across the country even like internationally so thank you so much for watching gift for here gift varsity tv thank you so much